So if that's how your Diesel Delica starts, you might need to check the glow plugs. Hey, welcome back to Project Addiction. So today we're working on this L400 and as you saw, it's got a pretty rough start. Lots of smoke, rough idle, no power. Now this can be a fairly common problem on older mechanical diesel engines. So if you have an L400 with the 4M40 or an L300 with the 4D56, then this is something that likely eventually at some point in time you are going to experience. Now this hard start can be caused by a number of things, but the most common issue is the glow plugs. Now, unlike a gasoline engine, which has spark plugs and injectors, the diesel engine has injectors, but it has no spark plugs. It basically relies on the compression of the fuel in order to ignite itself. However, in order for this to happen, the cylinder needs to be up to a certain temperature. And on a cold morning, you need to be able to preheat the engine somehow. And that's where the glow plugs come into play. So when the glow plugs aren't working, the cylinder doesn't get preheated and you can get one or two or sometimes all cylinders that don't fully combust the diesel as it's injected into the engine. So while this hard start could be caused by multiple things, the easiest thing to check is the glow plugs. So that's what we're gonna do today. Gaining access to the glow plugs on the L400 is pretty easy. All we need to do really is get the intercooler out of the way and we'll have access to them. On the L300, you just need to pop the passenger seat if you're a right-hand drive or remove the driver's seat if you're left-hand drive and you can get to them that way. To remove the intercooler is very simple. We'll need a Phillips screwdriver to remove the clamps and then some 10 millimeter bolts. And don't forget, once you've got those bolts out, there are still a few plugs here for the intercooler fan. Now remember, automotive plugs don't just pull out. They always have a latch somewhere. For this black one, you press the tab in the back and pull apart. For the second, push down on the tab and then work them apart. Now that we have our bolts out, our clamps loosened, and plugs disconnected, we can get the intercooler out of the way. We're not going to pull the whole thing out. We've left some of the plugs connected in the back here. So we're just going to disconnect it from the boost pipes and then move it out of the way. If you do want to remove the intercooler completely, you'll need to disconnect these solenoids as well. But that now gives us access to our fuel injectors, fuel pump, and the glow plugs. But before we start testing the glow plugs themselves, it's a good idea just to check and make sure that you actually have voltage on the glow plug bus bar. If you don't have voltage there, it doesn't matter whether your glow plugs are good or bad, system's not going to work. All we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a test light, stick it into the negative battery terminal, take a clamp, and place it on the bus bar. Then we'll just go turn the ignition key. So we saw it light up. We know we have good voltage going to the bus bar. Yes, you can do this with a voltmeter, but I prefer the test light here because this circuit does take load and a voltmeter might tell you it has 12 volts, but it won't tell you how much amperage is going through. If this light lit, but lit very dimly, we could have a resistance problem in the wire or a problem with the glow plug relay itself. Because it lit nice and bright, we know that there's plenty of amperage going through that system, so we shouldn't have any problems there. With power up the bus confirmed, we can go pull the glow plugs out. Depending whether you've got OEM plugs in there or not, the sizes may differ. For these, they are OEM, so we're going to need a 12 mil and a 10 mil wrench. First, we want to loosen off the four nuts on the top, which are holding the bus bar in place. They don't need to be removed fully, just backed off a little bit. Once they're sufficiently loosened, we can pull the bus bar out of the way. Then with a 12 mil, we can remove the glow plugs. All right, we've got our glow plugs out and there's three tests that we're going to perform on. We have them lined up, cylinder one, two, three, and four. So you will need a voltmeter to do these first tests, but the last one, you'll just need a pair of jumper cables. First thing we're going to do is check continuity to make sure that nothing is open. So take your voltmeter, set it to ohms, make sure you have the chime on, and if you hear the beep, that means we have continuity or the electricity is able to flow from one end of the plug all the way through to the other. That's basically what we're checking for here. Take your leads, Place one on the body, and then one on the very top. All right, so we know which one of those is good. Next, we can turn the chime off, and we're just going to check the resistance within the plug itself. Now, depending on the vehicle, that resistance is going to vary. According to the factory service manual, these are either going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.6 ohms, or one ohm, depending on the vehicle. So it looks like we've got 1.1, 1.1, 0.9, and 1.0. So seeing as they're all around one, we can assume that this L400 should be around one ohm resistance. 
Finally, we're going to do the glow test. All we need for that is a pair of jumper cables and the vehicle's battery. Okay, so the glow test. Now, this is the one that you can do if you don't have a voltmeter, and I'm gonna be honest, it's probably the most amusing one as well. Again, we just need a pair of jumper cables, a stopwatch or a cell phone with a timer, and the vehicle's battery. Now, I'm gonna connect this to the positive terminal. If you're doing this at home, I'd recommend going the other way, connect it to the negative terminal. That way, there's less chance of shorting out accidentally. For the sake of filming, I'm gonna go to the positive. So now that we've got this hooked up to the battery, we're just gonna take one of our glow plugs, clamp it into the other connector, or into the other alligator clamp, right on the body. We're gonna take the top where the bus bar mounts, and we're gonna touch it to the other terminal in the battery. And when we do that, we're gonna hit start. It is gonna get hot. As you can see, it glows red. And that took about 7.3 seconds to get it to full glow. Now we'll just repeat the process on the other three. Be careful where you place it down. It is hot. If you put it on something plastic, it could melt it. Well, that took about 14.6 seconds, but I don't think we had a good connection. So I'm gonna let this one cool off, put it aside, and we're gonna test it again in a minute. About 5.5 seconds for that one, and 6.3 for this one. So we'll just retest the other one that uh, took 14 seconds, but I'm pretty sure if we get a better connection, it's gonna heat up a lot faster. About 5.8 seconds for that one. So all of them are heating up roughly within the same amount of time, so that way you know that the resistance on all of them is roughly about the same as well. Now we tested it with the voltmeter, so we know for a fact they are even across the board. But again, this is just a method that you can use if you don't have a voltmeter on hand. Okay, so we've confirmed that all of our glow plugs are working as they should, and we have power to the whole system. That means our hard start probably isn't gonna be the glow plug, so we're gonna have to dig a little bit deeper to see if we can figure out why this vehicle is smoking on cold starts. In the meantime, we're gonna throw these back in. Now careful, if you did the uh, glow test, they might be a little bit warm, so don't touch the end. Before we put them in, any seats. If these things get stuck in the cylinder head, you snap one off, it is a nightmare to get them out. You sometimes have to resort to pulling the whole cylinder head off, and sometimes even replacing the cylinder head because of one of these. All right, so we've got our glow plugs all back in, and if you had found a bad one or have just replaced all of them, at this point, just throw your bus bar back on, reinstall your intercooler, and you're good to go. Now, because we didn't find any issues with any of the glow plugs, and we know we have a hard start, that means that we gotta start digging a little bit deeper. So we're gonna start looking at the fuel injection system here. And what I'm noticing is going to have to wait until next time. So hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you next time when we tear into the injectors.